Okay, the notes at the bottom of page four is where we're going to start in the notes that we would have done today in class. So graphs with asymptotes. This was the stuff that you guys went through and worked on last class when you chose the h value to be able to write your own equation. So much like y equals 1 over x minus 2, y equals 1 over x plus 5, just depends on the one that you wanted to look at. I actually want to focus on this graph specifically. The other graph in your notes should look familiar. That's the exponential graph that you guys did back in integrated one. This year, one of the graphs we're going to focus on, in addition to the exponential graph, is this graph. And uh, you can call it a graph of a rational function, which is what I prefer, um, or graphs of hyperbolas. So you see the book will use it interchangeably back and forth sometimes. Now, hopefully what we noticed was uh, last class when you chose your h value of, say, um, 2, and then you tried to plug it into your equation, you got something that was undefined, so it ended up being 1 over 0. In this case, that is what creates your vertical asymptote, so it's that vertical boundary. So here, our vertical boundary would be at this line, this yellow line here, at x equals 2. That x equals 2 would have actually been your h value. So I can already start building the equation to this. I know that it's going to be x minus 2 in the bottom, so that when I plug in 2, I get something that's undefined. So we're going to go ahead and start it out as 1 over, and then x minus 2. Now, as the year goes on, kind of like what you guys did back in integrated 2 when you did parabolas, we know that the h and the k, so where the vertex was located, is actually what kind of slid your parabola around. So um, if you had a vertex of like 2, 7, then we knew that where the vertex originally was at 0, 0 was moved right 2 and up 7. So in this case, I know I've been moved right 2 because my uh, h value is 2. On the other hand, I also know that my horizontal line is going to give me another asymptote. Last class, when you guys went through and discovered this, based off of your uh, h value and there being no k value that was selected, you should have had a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So it never really got to the x-axis. Well, we can take that 3 value, which is now our k, and that becomes our value at the very end of this. So not in the equation, excuse me, not in the fraction, but at the very end of the fraction. So it just kind of looks like it's hanging on. So in this case, we can take a look at this and say, all right, there is my horizontal asymptote, and I can also go back and find my vertical asymptote. So my vertical asymptote is going to be here at the 2, not the negative 2, just the 2. Notice that the signs are flipped just like it was last year. Your H had the opposite sign, your K had the same sign. Okay, moving on. Um, so that finishes page 4. I'm going to graph page 5. So at the very top, we've got some graphs there. What I want to do is take a look at what number is down in the bottom. So I would like this part down here to be a minus sign. So I'm going to rewrite this as x minus, that's going to be a negative 2. So we know that the negative and the minus cancel each other out. Now that I've done that, let's go ahead and actually turn that into black so you guys can see it a little bit better and then we can highlight. So x minus negative 2 in the bottom. All right. Now I know where my vertical asymptote is because it's at that negative 2. So I'm going to go to my graph, and I'm going to put a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. So that's going to be my boundary that I cannot cross on that side. Then there is nothing being added or subtracted at the end of your equation here. Well, the only number that we can add or subtract that doesn't do anything is 0. So I'm going to put a plus 0 here at the end. By doing that, I now see where my vertical asymptote is going, excuse me, horizontal asymptote is going to be located. So I want to go on and do the horizontal line of y equals 0. Okay, so now I've got my boundaries. With that said, there's only one other thing I want to look at, and that has to do with the coefficient on the numerator. So up here, taking a look at that 1. 
if that one is positive, which we're going to do, we'll do negatives later, if that one is positive, then that means that the graph, so the two-parter, is going to have um, the right portion of the two-parter is going to be up. So it's going to be in between these two. And I'm just going to sketch it. It doesn't have to be perfect. If that is the top right corner, then we want to kind of reflect over to the bottom left corner and that's where the other portion of our graph is going to be and that's my sketch I don't need much more than that when we start putting more numbers in or putting something in uh, the top of the fraction then okay we'll put a little bit more into it all right so let's take a look at this one now same idea I look at the denominator I don't need to write it as a minus because it already is I'm going to circle the number that's there that is going to be my vertical asymptote which is at x equals and keep in mind too that asymptotes are equations so if I were to write the equation of this asymptote it would be at x equals 4 likewise I go back up to the picture or the equation itself look for anything that's being added or subtracted at the end well there's nothing there so I'm going to go ahead and put a plus 0 that is going to tell me where my horizontal asymptote is. So I'll go back to my graph. y equals 0 is right on top of the x-axis. If I write out the equation for that one, this is y equals 0. Then I take a look at the coefficient. The coefficient on top is positive and it's just a positive 1, so that tells me that the top right portion of the graph is going to be going up, and the bottom left portion is going to go down. So top, right, reflect over those lines, bottom, left. There we go. We know how to graph rational functions. Okay, last thing we need to do is at the very bottom of page 5, so we're going to go ahead and finish up page 5. Uh, we're going to do points of intersection. We know that if we're trying to find points of intersection, those are actual coordinate pairs. So we're going to have to find values for x and y. But I want to figure out where these guys actually hit each other. And in order to do that, I need to put my two equations together. So if I take a look, they're both equal to y. If they're both equal to y, then I should be able to just set them equal to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and take my x plus 2 squared and I'm going to set it equal to the negative 2x minus 4. All right, before I proceed, I'm going to take a look and ask myself that question that we talked about a couple classes ago. How many variables do I physically see in the problem? Well, I see two. I see one on the left-hand side here, and I see one on the right-hand side here. With that said, um, I need to follow order of operations, so I need to basically untrap the one on the left-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out. Remember, squared means times itself, so it really is worth it for you to go ahead and multiply or show the multiplication of the x plus 2, x plus 2. I'll deal with the right-hand side in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out. I'm going to get x squared plus 4, x plus 4. Yeah, I know I created an x squared, but at least it's not trapped inside parentheses anymore bring down my negative 2x minus 4 on both sides. Okay, now at this point, it's a quadratic question. So I've got an x squared, x, and constant. Um, I'm going to start with factoring and see if that works. So I'm going to push everybody on the same side of the equation together. So I'm going to move this 2x over, and I'm going to move the 4. So I'll put everybody on the same side, see if factoring works. If it doesn't, I'll try something else. So this is x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. This is factorable. So if you draw diamonds in boxes, go right ahead. If not, and you can go straight to the punch on this. I believe it is x plus 4 and x plus 2. In this case, we can use zero product property. So find where the multiplication occurs and split these guys up. So I get an x plus 4 equals 0 and an x plus 2 equals 0 minus my 4. x equals negative 4 minus my 2x equals negative 2. Now, I'm not done. I'm not done because my original question, my two equations had two variables in them. They had x's and y's. I have only found the x's. My job is to find the y's that go with them. 
So go back up to the original equations. Find the one that makes you the happiest. I actually prefer the second one because I think it looks easier. So I'm going to look at that guy right there. And everywhere I see an x, I'm going to go ahead and start plugging some values in. So I'm going to go ahead and just extend this down just a little bit further and keep the guy separated. So if I have x equals negative 4, I'm going to go back up to the equation y equals negative 2x minus 4. And I'm going to plug in my negative 4 and figure out what the y value is that's associated with this one. So it looks like that's going to be positive 4. All right, so I found one of the answers. Make sure you write it as an ordered pair. The x value was negative 4. The y value was positive 4. I'm going to do the exact same thing with y equals x minus 2, excuse me, x equals negative 2. Using the exact same equation, though, you don't have to use one one time and one the other time. You can use the exact same one repeatedly. Just make sure that you keep plugging in the values to be able to find what you're looking for. Okay, I think that gives me 4 minus 4, and that's 0. All right, so now I know that my other point, I plugged in a negative 2, and I got a 0 out of it. So these two things down here are my solutions, negative 4, 4, negative 2, 0. Now I could have gone ahead and graphed the problem, and graphed the line. I just found where the graph and the line hit each other. Make sure that you take the opportunity to get these filled into your notes, and we'll pick up right where we're supposed to be next class.